Rebuilding a Burnout Vulcan model steam engine toy part 18, marking out the positions in the top cap for the safety valve and steam outlet. Accurately drilling the tapping size holes using my small rotary table and then threading them quarter by 40 threads per inch. I try not to mention it too much, but regular viewers will know that I have prostate cancer. Tomorrow I go to the hospital for the first of the radiotherapy sessions. There will be five sessions in total, and the final one will take place on the 10th of June. I'd better mention that my videos always go onto Patreon first, and not onto YouTube, so if you're watching this on YouTube, the dates will not make any sense. Anyway, it's time to get on with the job. I need to drill two holes in the top cap. One will be for the safety valve, and the other one will be for the steam outlet to the engine. I'm going to start with the wrong way to do it. Using a felt tip pen, I put two dots either side of the centre hole in the top cap. And I think at the time, possibly owing to the drugs that I'm taking, my calibrated eye wasn't quite so calibrated as usual. The marks were close to the centre, but not close enough. When I drew a line across the marks, you can see that the line is not in the centre at all. The important dimension for this job is the distance between the centre hole and the outside edge where the steam fittings will be. I'm using a steel rule for this and it's quite simple. Although there's a bit of a problem with the camera angle and the fact that the top cap has a slightly rounded top edge, I've taken the measurement from the proper edge of the top cap. The line across the middle was nowhere near really, so I messed about with it and drew on it a bit more. I wiped it off and started again, but it still wasn't good. There must be a simple way to find the centre. I could make a brass plug that is a snug fit in the hole, turn it in the lathe and run a lathe tool across the end of it so it would have a line on it, and that really would be in the centre. I suppose I could put the part straight into the lathe chuck and mark each side with a sharp lathe tool on centre height. Here is the part in the machine vice on the drilling machine, but I'm not going to drill the holes this way. My old milling machine is also a drilling machine, and what I'm doing here is just showing you the centre drawbar, which is what holds the R8 collets into the spindle, a very good system. To loosen the collets, I don't need to pull the spindle out like this, I'm just showing you what it is. Normally, I would slacken it off using a spanner, then rotate the drawbar a few times to release the collet. I remove the milling cutter from the collet first, then the collet itself from the spindle. My milling machine is also a drilling machine, and this is a drill chuck fitted into an R8 adapter. I raised the height of the centre column, so then I could move the rotary table into position. I'm going to be using a centre drill, and I use this centre drill to align the rotary table with the centre of the main machine spindle. This is very important. The job starts by removing the original chuck jaws, and I have drilled one or two holes in them, to be honest. Thinking about it, when I fit the outer jaws, I'm going to leave those in place to allow the machine to hold larger diameter pieces of metal. A quick word about changing jaws on a three-jaw chuck. Chuck jaws need to be fitted in a specific order. There are numbers on the jaws and numbers on the slots. It's quite simple. Jaw 1 goes into slot 1, jaw 2 goes into slot 2, and unsurprisingly, jaw 3 goes into slot 3. In this clip, I'm giving the chuck jaws a bit of a clean with a paintbrush. Here I'm fitting the outside jaws, starting with number one, and before the scroll of the chuck reaches the next slot, I insert jaw number two, and then jaw number three. If you don't do it in this order, the jaws will not touch each other when you tighten the scroll. This clip is slightly misleading, because at this stage, I hadn't centred the chuck against the spindle. Now I have, and with the centre drill in the chuck, I'm drilling the first of the holes. The vernier scale on the rotary table is set to zero at the moment. After drilling the first hole and brushing away the swarf, I rotated the handle to the 180 degree mark. Once it reached 180 degrees, I lock the table using the clamp. This clamp is a bit hit and miss, but it does actually lock the table, so it's okay. And now, at the 180 degree point, I'm drilling the other hole with a centre drill. I brush away the swarf 
and fit a 7 30 seconds of an inch twist drill bit into the chuck. Why 7 30 seconds of an inch? That is tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. Can't really think of much to say at this point. I'm drilling a hole in a piece of metal all the way through. I'm taking my time, particularly as the drill breaks through, because I don't want it to plunge downwards into the chuck. I have quite a lot of good quality mahogany, and really I think I should have used a piece of that underneath where the drill breaks through to stop it from hitting the chuck, but thankfully it didn't anyway. I'll be really pleased when the end of July comes, because I can come off this drug that's really affecting my memory very badly. Not long term, just short term. I do something, then I can't remember whether I've done it or not. And no, it's not old age because it only happened when I started taking this drug called bicalutamide. The drilling marathon is over, and I'm not going to forget to thread the holes. Normally I would start the tap in the drilling machine, but this time I thought I'd do it differently. A while ago I made some of these. They are tap guides. You hold them tightly in position, and the tap goes through the work at a perfect 90 degrees. You have to hold them tightly in position, and it's worth remembering that this tap has a very sharp point on the end. And I really didn't want it to exit through the back of my hand, but I think the pain would have given me a clue that there was something wrong. If life is getting a bit boring, make some of these tap guides. I've had them for a few years now, and they are very useful for certain jobs. This clip shows the safety valve screwed in place. There is, of course, a washer to go underneath it between the cap and the valve. What about a steam tap? Well, this is a quarter by 40 steam tap, and it doesn't look good at all. It's massively overscale, so I won't be using this. Here's a comparison between the new boiler and the old boiler. The regulator on a burnout Vulcan is on the exhaust side, but unfortunately I only have one of these valves, so I'll have to make one. I'm definitely not going to use the overscale tap as fitted in this clip. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.